Hello, my name is Glenn Hall and today is November 15th, 2019. This is part 18 of my video series, The Mystery of the Beast, and this is part two of The Great City. We're reading from Revelation chapter 17 and 18. 17 begins like this. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality, and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. This is the beast that we saw rising from the sea in Revelation chapter 13. <clears throat> the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. This woman is Babylon the Great. This woman is characterized by her sexual immorality. Think of one thing that characterizes the world that we live in today. It is rampant sexual immorality of any type imaginable, anything you can think of, any trans this, that, or other that you can think of. That is the world we live in. This woman has driven the earth mad with her sexual immorality. Think Jeffrey Epstein. Think child trafficking. Think satanic ritual sexual abuse. This is all coming out into the open now. We, we hardly thought of such things a mere year or two or three ago. Since President Trump has come upon the scene, all of this is coming out into the open, and this is relevant. This is something to be understood, something we need to, to know, because God is revealing mysteries. God is re revealing the times, and he's revealing the prophecies at this time. When people talk about the Bible and they talk about the laws of God, <clears throat> the one thing that they always try to get around are the laws concerning sexual immorality. And so we have these mad pushes to make the world accept any type of sexual perversion that could possibly exist. This is the fruit of Babylon the Great. Notice that this woman is sitting on a scarlet beast. This woman, Babylon the Great, is sitting on the beast with seven heads that we see in Revelation chapter 17. When we go to chapter 18, 18 is all about the fall of this Babylon. Let's see what it says. After this, that means after this revelation that the angel was showing John in chapter 17, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. <clears throat> As I've said before, Babylon the Great is the satanic principle that has ruled the world since the beginning, since Adam and Eve sinned in the very beginning. This principle of Babylon the Great has ruled the world. That's why it's filled with every kind of demon and unclean spirit. Verse 3, For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. 
and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Two things characterize Babylon the Great, her sexual immorality and her trade. She's always involved with trade. She's all about making money. She's all about mammon. She worships mammon. Satan teaches all of his people to worship mammon. Jesus said you can only worship one or the other. Either you will worship God or you will worship mammon. And that is true. Anyone who worships mammon takes the mark of the beast. If you refuse to take the mark of the beast, you cannot worship mammon because you cannot buy or sell. That means that you will be <clears throat> despised and rejected by people so that you cannot sell your services. And when you can't sell your services, then you can't buy other services. So you cannot buy or sell. You're blacklisted. That has been true for all of the saints of God for this entire 6,000 year period of time since Adam. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. There are at least five places in scripture where God specifically says to come out of Babylon. And he says, come out of her, my people. Do you understand what that means? That means that God's people are part of the satanic system. And that is true. Just think of the people that you know, the Christians that you know, the good people that you know, who voted for Hillary Clinton. Manifestly evil manifestly evil. Barack Obama, manifestly evil. Look at the things that they did. And look at the things that they got away with because the media supports them. The media is manifestly evil. They were able to buy and sell. They were able to sell their services all the time. And they got those services rendered to their children all the time. That's what this impeachment fiasco is all about, isn't it? trying to hide what really happened with Joe Biden and his son, Hillary Clinton and her family, Mitt Romney and his family, John Kerry and his family, and on and on, John McCain and his family. Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins lest you share in her plagues, for her sins are heaped high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back as she herself has paid back others, and repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she has mixed. As she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her a like measure of torment and mourning. Since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen. I am no widow. And mourning I shall never see. Pay particular attention to that verse 7. As she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her a like measure of torment and mourning. Since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen. I am no widow, and mourning I shall never see. We're going to revisit that in just a, just a minute. Verse 8, For this reason her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire. For mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city, Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. You great city. Six times in this chapter, chapter 18 of Revelation, six times Babylon the Great is called a great city. 
Babylon the Great is the great city. How does a great city sit upon a beast? Remember, that's how Revelation 17 began with this woman sitting, riding upon a beast. How does a city sit on a beast? We have to think spiritually. Obviously, in the natural, it cannot happen. So these are not natural things that we're dealing with. These are spiritual things. This is the satanic city. In scripture, you often have two things. First, the natural, then the spiritual. You have old Jerusalem and you have the new Jerusalem that we will look at in Revelation 21 and 22. You have the old man who is the man of flesh formed of the dust, Adam. We are all in Adam. And then you have the spiritual man formed after the spirit, which is Christ. You have two women. You have Hagar, who represents old Jerusalem. And then you have Sarah, who represents new Jerusalem. Sarah was the wife of Abraham. So throughout scripture, you often have pairs of things. You have the natural, and then you have the spiritual. This city is the natural city. This city is the beast city. This city is the satanic city. Everyone who still resides in the beast and takes the mark of the beast still lives under the authority of this city, of this satanic city. But let's go back now and look at verse 7. In her heart, she says, I sit as a queen, I am no widow, and mourning I shall never see. Let's look at a couple scriptures that use very similar words. First, we'll go to Isaiah 47. Now, <clears throat> Isaiah 47 deals with Babylon. In the past, many people have interpreted these scriptures in Isaiah and Jeremiah dealing with the destruction of Babylon as having been dealt with when the kingdom of Persia, Medea Persia, destroyed or took over Babylon by Cyrus the Great. But these verses deal with today. These verses deal with the taking down of Babylon the Great. And that's why we're going to take time to read through the prophetic scriptures. <clears throat> Sit in silence and go into darkness. By the way, this is Isaiah 47. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called the mistress of kingdoms. I was angry with my people. I profaned my heritage. I gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. On the aged, you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. Look how heavy the yoke is upon the elderly today. They're losing their entire estates to medicine. Medicine, pharmacy, sorcery. That is one of the characteristics of Babylon the Great, sorcery. The yoke upon the people of God is exceedingly heavy. Now look at this. You said, Babylon said, I shall be mistress forever so that you did not lay these things to heart or remember their end. Now, therefore, hear this, you lover of pleasures, sexual immorality, trade, untold wealth and riches, billionaires, billionaires, millionaires, millionaires. 
Now, therefore, hear this, you lover of pleasures who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children. Really. Go back to 17. I sit as a queen. I am no widow, and mourning I shall never see. And then it's followed up by this. For this reason, her plagues will come in a single day. Now go back to Isaiah 47. You who say in your heart, I am and there is no one besides me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children. These two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and widowhood shall come upon you in full measure. In spite of your many sorceries and the great power of your enchantments, sorceries, pharmacia, pharmacy, drugs, magic, Look what she says. I am. Who else said, I am? Moses asked God when God said, go to your people Israel and Egypt and tell them that I sent you to bring them out of Egypt. Moses asks, who shall I say sent me? God says, I am. That is how God refers to himself. And how does she refer to herself? I am. Now this is a key. Remember this because we will come back to this in a future video where I will deal with the great apostasy and we will, I will show you something that is really amazing with regard to that. And this is not the only place where this occurs. Let's go to Zephaniah. Zephaniah 2 and the verses 15. This is the exultant city that lived securely, that said in her heart, I am, and there is no one else. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 15. The exultant city, the great city, she said in her heart, I am. So you see, Zephaniah speaks of Babylon the Great. Isaiah speaks of Babylon the Great. Jeremiah speaks of Babylon the Great in chapters 50 and 51. Nahum, the whole book of Nahum, deals with Nineveh, but yet it's dealing in a secret way with Babylon the Great, but not calling it Babylon at that time. Let's go now again back to Revelation, chapter 18. Because of her boasting and because she wants to take the place of God, for this reason her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire. For mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city, Babylon. For in a single hour, your judgment has come. This tells me that the judgment of Babylon is going to come quickly, that it's going to happen in a very quick fashion. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, how it's going to look. I could only guess. I don't know if it will be because of an actual hot war between Donald Trump and his armies and the armies that remain faithful to Babylon the Great. I don't know. It may be that the overcomers are glorified, revealed, and actually bring a very quick defeat to Babylon the Great 
in a way that is more spiritual than natural carnal warfare? I don't know. But look at the result. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her since no one buys their cargo anymore. Trade is ended. The way trade has been done has been an abomination before God because it has made many people exceedingly rich and kept many others exceedingly poor. And the poor have never been able to enjoy the fruit of the land that God so abundantly gave to us. No one buys their cargo anymore. Cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble. Cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and slaves, that is, human souls. See, Babylon trades in human beings. Babylon traffics human beings. Babylon is a slave trader. And yet Babylon tries to intimidate us. Many people here in America, for example, who look like me, calling us racist because at one time black people were sold as slaves in this country. I had nothing to do with slavery. I never owned a slave. I have nothing to do with that. I have nothing to be ashamed of concerning that. It has nothing to do with me. I don't deal in human souls. I don't deal in slavery. Stop being intimidated. Stand up for truth. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for justice. Quit being a wimp. Everybody's afraid to speak the truth because it might offend somebody. I don't care if it offends you. Why should I care? Did Jesus care? Did Jesus care that he offended the Pharisees and the Sadducees when he told them that they were evil? That they were children of Satan? Stand up for the truth. Come out of Babylon. Yeah, come out of Babylon. You who are pious. You who think you know something. You don't yet know as you ought to know. I can tell you that. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and you share in her plagues. Verse 14. The fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you, and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. Never to be found again. Babylon is coming down. The Luciferian age is over. The kingdom of God is at hand. His people will rule with a rod of iron. They will rule with righteousness, justice, mercy, truth. But they will not allow the rampant evil that has been allowed in this world for 6,000 years. The merchants of these wares who gain wealth from her will stand off in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning aloud, alas, alas, for the great city. There it is again, the great city, that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels and with pearls, for in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste. Your time has come. Babylon, your time has come. The end has come. And all shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors and all those, all whose trade is on the sea, stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning. What city was like? The great city. And they threw dust on their heads and they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, for the great city where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth, for in a single hour she has been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heaven. And you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. God has given judgment for you against her. 
God is judging the harlot. God has raised up Donald Trump as the eighth head of the beast to judge her. Oh, really? Yes? Revelation chapter 17, the very end. And the angel said to me, the waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. Babylon is everywhere, ubiquitous. Babylon covers the earth. Babylon the Great controls the world. Babylon the Great is the satanic principle that controls all governments. She rides the beast. The beast is man's government. The heads of the beast are the heads of man's government. The heads of the beast are the kings. But yet all of those kings have been ruled by Babylon the Great, the satanic principle that has ruled all. All peoples, multitudes, nations, languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. We now are at that time where people are waking up to the reality that they have been ruled by evil, that they have been ruled by tyrants. Finally, finally men are waking up and they're coming out of Babylon. But they're coming out with their sins. They're coming out with all of the things that Babylon taught them as good. They're coming out with all of their sexual immorality. They're coming out even sometimes with their sorcery. Coming out with their unlawful trade. But they're leaving this diabolical system called Babylon the Great that ruled ruthlessly over everyone. You see how ruthlessly she rules. Look at the whistleblower recently. The whistleblower from ABC that Project Veritas revealed. And then someone thought that that person had gone to work at CBS. So CBS fired that person they thought it was. And it wasn't that person. But yet they tried to destroy the person that they thought had revealed some of their secrets. Because they were not going to reveal to the world what Jeffrey Epstein was. Because they're part of the system. They're part of the sexual immorality. They're part of the trafficking in human souls. Of course, they're not going to reveal it. So they look for those who did reveal in order to destroy them. Because that's what they do. That's how Babylon rules. Do you understand? And yet so many remain in Babylon. So many still partake of her pleasures. And God says, you will, partake, you will partake of her sins, yes. But you will then partake of her plagues. So, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. Look, the beast is what did this to Babylon. The destruction of Babylon is done by the beast. Perhaps the overcomers help. I am holding out hope that the overcomers will be glorified during this time of destruction of Babylon the Great so that, so that the beast can be saved because Revelation 17, 14 says the beast will make war on the Lamb. But it says the Lamb will conquer them. So I am holding out hope that the overcomers, led by the Lamb, led by Jesus, will bring utter salvation to the beast. But the beast will make her, will make Babylon the great desolate and naked, and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. The great city 
is Babylon the Great. The great city has dominion over the kings of the earth. It has ruled the earth for 6,000 years. Satan is the ruler of this world. What city was like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, for the great city where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth. For in a single hour she has been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heaven, for you and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, so will Babylon the great city be thrown down with violence and be found no more. If someone causes my little ones to sin, Jesus says it is better that a millstone be thrown around his neck and he be thrown into the sea. Babylon the great has caused many to sin and she will be destroyed like that. So will Babylon the great city be thrown down with violence and will be found no more. And the sound of harpists and musicians, of flute players and trumpeters will be heard in you no more. And a craftsman of any craft will be found in you no more. And the sound of the mill will be heard in you no more. And the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of bridegroom and bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth. They were the Canaanites. They were the traitors. They were the ones that God told Israel to destroy, that Israel failed to destroy. And all nations were deceived by your sorcery, by your pharmacia, by your drugs, by your witchcraft. And in her, in Babylon the Great, was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who have been slain on earth. Think about it. Every single murdered person, their blood God attributes to Babylon the Great. When Cain killed Abel, that was the spirit of Satan. Babylon the Great is the spirit of Satan. Now, remember what I read to you from Matthew 23 yesterday. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees, the scribes and the Pharisees over and over, seven woes, seven times. And then finally, at the end of the rebuke, he says, therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, so that you, so that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth. All the righteous blood shed on earth comes upon these people, the Pharisees and the scribes. How can that be? And yet still come upon Babylon the Great. Because Jesus was saying that they were part of Babylon the Great. Jesus was saying that they lived under the authority and rule of Satan. They were part of Satan's government. They were leaders in Babylon the Great. And you know many leaders in Babylon the Great today. Adam Schiff. Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, John Kerry, Joe Biden, on and on. Every Democrat you can think of, and some Republicans, Mitt Romney. John McCain was part of Babylon the Great. Sadly, many, many Christians are still part of Babylon the Great, and it's time for them to come out.
one more thing that I want to show you today. In Zephaniah, remember Zephaniah was said, this is the exultant city that lives securely and said in her heart, I am and there is no one else. Remember how Babylon the Great said that in chapter 18? What city is this prophet Zephaniah talking about? Well, let's go and see. Verse 13, And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria. And he will make Nineveh a desolation, a dry waste like the desert. Herds will lie down in the, her midst, all kinds of beasts. Even the owl and the hedgehog shall lodge in her capitals. A voice shall hoot in the window. Devastation will be on the threshold, for her cedar work will be laid bare. This is the exultant city. This, Nineveh, is the exultant city. Nineveh says, I am and there is no one else. And that's what Babylon the Great said. What does that say? It says that Nineveh is part of, or one of the cities of Babylon the Great. Jerusalem is one of the cities of Babylon the Great. Revelation 11. Sodom, one of the cities of Babylon the Great. Gomorrah. Egypt, one of the countries of Babylon the Great. If we go to the book of Nahum, for example, woe to the bloody city. What city is he talking about? Woe to Nineveh. He's talking about Nineveh. In fact, the entire book of Nahum is about Nineveh, God's wrath against Nineveh. So Nineveh is one of the great cities in Scripture that has an entire prophetic book devoted to it, talking about its destruction. So what's Nahum talking about? Nahum, the entire book of Nahum, three chapters, is talking about the destruction of Babylon the Great. Now in Scripture, you typically had a fulfillment in prophecy that was relatively close to the time it was prophesied, which was the first or natural fulfillment of that prophecy. That would be called the type, T-Y-P-E. In the New Testament, you have the prophetic fulfillment, which is called the anti-type, A-N-T-I-T-Y-P-E. It's the prophetic fulfillment of a natural event that happened. And we see that over and over in Scripture. It's exactly the same principle as what I taught you in a previous video dealing with the parables of the Bible. All of the Bible is a parable, one parable after another, one story after another, but they're true stories. Jesus, when he spoke, he spoke in parables. He would make up a story that was not necessarily a true story. He would tell a story, but the story he told was a parable that spoke prophetic truth. All of the Bible is like that. That's how we learn to interpret the Bible and how we learn to understand the Bible. Because we see how God works in the Old Testament and then on how he works in the New Testament. When we get to Babylon the Great and the destruction of Babylon the Great, we're dealing with the destruction of a spiritual principle. Therefore, when you get here to Revelation 18, 21 to 23, when it says that you will never hear the sound of harpists, musicians, flute, trumpet, no craftsmen, no mill, and everything. We want to read that in the natural and think, oh my goodness, that means that all life on earth ceases. No, it doesn't mean that. It means that all of these things cease within the context of a demonic, satanic paradigm or government. The paradigm is changing. The paradigm is changing from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. 
That's why God is bringing forth this revelation right now. That's why he showed me these things. That's why I'm teaching these things. That's why you're listening to these things. So that you understand that we are in the midst of a paradigm change. We are on, we are on the verge of what we could call the third testament. You know, there was the Old Testament, the Old Covenant with Moses and the law. There was the New Covenant with Jesus and the apostles. There is now coming the third covenant, the third testament with the overcomers of God, which is the fulfillment of the promised new covenant because that promised new covenant has not come for the vast majority of people on the earth yet. Only a few. It came only for a few. Those were the ones who were called the elect, the chosen, the predestined. And that's why it seemed so unfair during this last age, during this second covenant period of time. God was pulling out the overcomers and the overcomers only. Now he is going to take this to the entire world. And that's why people always talk about a great revival coming. But it's no revival. Revivals fail. What is coming will not fail. What is coming is the kingdom of God. And it will not fail because God does not fail. So I'm teaching this so that you can grab hold of it and understand the times that we live in so that you can begin now to tell others because we are at the time of change. We're there. We are there.